So, Ian Ruskin, uh, oh. it, it almost sounds like the GOP presidential field, you yes. know, listening yes. uh, to some of that. Um, do you think the the way the Tea Party, Glenn Beck, and other people uh, have used um, Thomas Paine, and in particular, uh, Common Sense that he wrote, uh, is that accurate? I mean, is that where you think Thomas Paine would be saying today what we just heard? No. From <laughs> Not for a moment. So th one of the things Thomas Paine said, this is, this is the core of it, he said, society in every state is a blessing, but government, even in its best state, is but a necessary evil, in its worst state, an intolerable one. Now that's the phrase that the Tea Party, that the right have taken, have jumped on and used. And what Paine was actually saying was, we are society, and in an ideal state, we would all look after each other. We would all work for the common good. And we wouldn't need government. Wouldn't that be wonderful? But since we can't yet achieve that, we have to have government to uh, restrain our vices and to give the support that we can't give each other ourselves. Well, That's what he was saying. Well, practically his vision of needing no government almost sounds like the description of a communist society. I'm sure he would turn in his grave to be, uh, oh, well, he, to be referred to I, as such. Uh, yeah, I mean, this was, <laughs> this was his utopia. That yeah. This was his ideal, because he was a man of the Enlightenment, where we were all supposed to contribute to the common good. But, in fact, I mean, he, he supported a strong central government, he, uh, I have uh, lots of his writings with me of things he wrote about in terms of the role of government in people's lives, that government had responsibilities to supply all kinds of support, uh, lots of things that the right are now trying to get rid of. You know, Payne was talking about what we would call social security and unemployment and welfare and free education for children. Mm -hmm. This is in 1790. Nobody else was talking like that. And he said, he always said that uh, all this support, this is a quote, is not the nature of charity, but of a right. Yeah. And that was his fundamental belief. So this idea about getting rid of government, yeah, he would be totally against it. Writing and getting rid of the safety net, yes, uh, absolutely. welfare and, and social security and, and the rest of it. Now, in his day, he um, I read somewhere that he uh, supported the French Revolution, which was you know oh, yes. pretty radical. Now, what about the question of, of slavery? Because we know a number of the, the founding fathers were indeed uh, slave holders, and indeed um, there is a museum that a new exhibit exploring Thomas Jefferson's slave ownership um, the Smith, at the Smithsonian, um, their National Black History Museum, and particularly looking at his relationship with Sally Hemings, the slave, the woman who was enslaved that many historians think he had a relationship with and had a number of children uh, with Thomas Jefferson being the third president. But a number of them were uh, slaveholders. Yes. So um, what was Thomas Paine's view on slavery as far as you know? He was absolutely against it. He wrote a, a piece called American uh, African, I can't remember the name of the piece, Yeah. but slavery in America. He denounced it. He said there should be no slavery, that all men should be free. He also said that all men should vote, that you shouldn't have to have any requirements of property. So logically that would have meant that all black men would vote. Right. He didn't so get he quite as far as slavery. Women, but, yeah. Oh, absolutely. He thought it was absolutely wrong. He thought it was uh, appalling. I mean, yeah. you know, if America had listened, there would have been no civil war. Yeah, and, and back in those times, and you had some people who opposed slavery, but then said, "Well, uh, black men shouldn't vote, right?" So he 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 covered both ends. Apparently, he condemned slavery as early as 1775, um, and stood out for the immediate emancipation of the slaves. He also attacked the plundering of India, apparently, and he called for institutions that would support the elderly, widowed women. Sounds like welfare. <laughs> well, that's what it couples, would be called. Poor, yes, yes. Yeah. He had a wonderful image that the 
wealth in those days was land. That's the wealthy had the land. That if you had land, what you cultivated was yours. You owned that. But yeah. you never owned the earth. And therefore, you would have to pay a rent for depriving other people of having land if you had a big estate and I had no land, you would have to pay a rent into a fund that among other things, when everyone turned 21, men and women, they would be given a sum of money so they could maybe take over a small piece of land and buy a cow or buy a plow and become self-sufficient. Or, or a mule. Or a mule. But what a, what a concept. I mean, this is not Marxism. It's, it's still within the capitalist system, if you like. Mm -hmm. But it's saying, he, he said, the earth is the inheritance of all men and women given to them by God. So therefore, if you have a big piece of land you make money out of, you have to put some of that money back into society. Yeah, and, and apparently he was also for estate taxes, progressive taxation, public education, and yes. more. <clears throat> some of the things that the, the Tea Party definitely uh, would be railing against today. Now, what about uh, religion? Because we see the rise of the evangelical movements of today and their influence in politics, including in, in the presidential <clears throat> uh, campaign. Uh, what about religion and Thomas Paine? Well, Thomas Paine, along with most of the Founding Fathers, was a deist. And deists believe in, putting it very simply, they believe in a universal creative power, uh -huh. or a god, or, or a great father, whatever you want to call this force. But they also believe that you do not find God by going to any church, reading any religious book, listening to any man who, woman who claims to have had a revelation, you go and you take a walk in the woods. You go and look oh. at nature and you find God. And this was this way of thinking, this deism, religion, if that's what you call it, it was open to everyone. It was a totally, totally multicultural religion it, you, because there was no doctrine. There was no, you didn't have to do anything to get into heaven. You just had to go out and enjoy the presence of God. Um, so this, the, the, the piece you played about a, a unicultural society, I mean, yeah. Paine would be abhorred by that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but so he was, you know, Teddy Roosevelt called him the dirty little atheist, and he, oh. was, he was none of those. But he was, he was a deist who believed, when he wrote um, The Age of Reason, which was seen as a great attack on religion, which it was in a way, it, but it was actually written to stop the extremes of people who say in France were killing a lot of priests. It was written against atheism, because he was a, he believed in a god. Yeah, he was a deist. He was a he, he was, was a deist. Quite uh, quite different there. Yeah, as so. were most of the founding fathers. Almost all of them. They were. I think Adams was the only one you would say was a Christian. They were all deists. So this is a complete retelling of history by uh, these Tea Party's uh, so-called his historians. And my guest is uh, Ian uh, Ruskin here, who is uh, has a new play we're going to be talking about. Um, a lot of people know of, of his work, his previous work, with uh, From Wharf Rats to Lords of the Docks on Harry Bridges' project. Uh, but now, to begin the world over again, the life of Thomas Paine. We'll be talking a bit about that play in a moment. Um, but I, I wanted to just contrast. I mean, one of the things we found is that Margaret Thatcher, one of the conservative heroes of the past 40 <coughs> years, along with Ronald Reagan, you would think he was running again as much as he's being quoted in the GOP field. She once famously said, there is no such thing as society. But Paine, in his classic Rights of Man, wrote, no one man is capable without the aid of society of supplying his own wants. So he, he definitely um, would disagree. <laughs> with Absolutely, that conservative yes. View. Yes, that, I mean that, that that little bit you quoted is from a larger part where he talks about if you have a few people going to a new country to begin with, they all help each other and everything is good. They can all meet under one tree to discuss their <laughs> affairs. But as they grow in number. Then you have to bring in, and as they then start to support each other, maybe a little less, you have to begin to elect people to represent. But then Payne also, also talks about how there has to be a constant contact between the elected and the electors. 
so that the elected don't become their own group with their own interests. Ah, ah, sounds so sounds it. familiar yes, <laughs> in yes. terms of what's going on in Capitol Hill right now. Well, Ian Ruskin, um, graduate of the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art in London, you could hear it in your voice. <laughs> there is now this uh, play, the the Life of Thomas Paine. Uh, tell us about that, and uh, tell us for people who would like to see you and see this play what they should do. So tell us what's happening. Well, the uh, the play I'm I'm hoping to do soon for at least a short run in a couple of theaters in Los Angeles. And okay. I will let you know and everybody Please. else know. Yes. Um, there are, can I talk about these two Please. weekends? Yeah. There, there, there are two events this weekend which will interest people, I think. We are going to put uh, seven short films up on YouTube, of mainly excerpts from my play, mm -hmm. maybe with some little short clips of Bob Basso. To, okay, to challenge, from the tea party that we heard To earlier. challenge what yeah. he's done. He's had 14 million hits. That's huge. So we want to challenge that. We have a lot of uh, unions in, and the AFL-CIO and various organizations that are going to support us in terms of getting people to uh, go and watch. Yeah. Because the more hits you get, the more hits you get. Um, so Saturday in, uh, in Santa Monica, we're going to have a fundraiser from 2 to 5 p.m. The information is actually all on the KPFK website, the invite. All righty. We invite people to come. Um, Please RSVP. What time is it on from, Saturday? From two to five. Okay. And it's uh, in Santa Monica on San Vicente. Uh, and go to kpfk.org. Yes, yes. And uh -huh. it's free, but we say bring your checkbooks. Any donation, large or small, right. to, to make these films happen. Okay. So that's one event. And then Sunday is Payne's birthday. Oh, so yeah. this is quite timely. Oh, yes. <laughs> and there's a Thomas Payne Society in mm -hmm. Pasadena, and every year on his birthday they have an event. Again, it's a fundraiser, it's $35, I think, and you get some wine and punch and things to eat. And what usually happens is there's, uh, I speak as pain, and then there's a sort of debate within the audience about a particular subject, which will happen again. But this year, they're gonna film me speaking, and I'm gonna talk about big government. And they're gonna put that up on YouTube as the first of a series called Tom Talk as opposed to TED Talks, where they actually want to then bring in people, people from today to talk about issues that have a connection to Payne's life and his beliefs. So that's, I think, going to be very exciting also. Right. Uh, putting you on the spot here a little bit, can you give us maybe, we, we, we just have about a minute or so, a little phrase or sentence, uh, you know, we, we heard you as, as, as Harry Bridges. Anything you want to say to us as Thomas Payne? <clears throat> well, I could say that um, Adams said that the United States should be governed by a few of the most wise and good, the rich, the well-born, and the able. Hamilton said that the rich and well-born should have a distinct permanent share in the government to check the imprudence of democracy. And yet there was a famous case of a man who fell on hard times and had to sell his ass therefore losing enough of his assets as to also lose his right to vote. Ben Franklin was quoted as saying, wherein lies the vote, in the man or in the ass? Which became a very famous <laughs> phrase. Oh, I'll bet. Well, on that note, we will have to wrap it up. Ian Ruskin, thank you so very much for coming in and joining you in the studio. We uh, think you do terrific work. Thank uh, you. Ian Ruskin, graduate of the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art in London, and um, uh, with the Harry Bridges Project now, The Life of Thomas Paine. Uh, today's show produced by Margaret Prescott. I'd like to thank the entire Sojourner Truth team, Teddy Robinson, Teresa McGee, uh, Eric Doyle, Sammy Mangello, Teddy, of course, our engineer, assistant producer, Sarah Shakur. Follow us on Twitter at So True Radio and become our friend on Facebook. Look for Sojourner Truth Radio. If you'd like a copy of today's show, please contact the Pacifica Radio Archives at 1 800 7350 230. Go online to PacificaRadioArchives.org. Sojourner Truth will be back on the air for our weekly roundtable tomorrow. You won't want to miss that. Thank you for listening. This is your host, Margaret Prescott.